You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. About glue. About glue? Yes. I've thought it through and it is definitely about glue. What about glue? Well, what is not about glue? I think you will find it is a great deal more relevant once you understand what glue is. I take it we are not actually talking about glue. Not in the same way that we might talk about fixing a drawer in the bedroom or a shelf in the living room, but glue all the same. It's the only glue worth having, and slow as I am, I have come to realise that without this glue, nothing is worth anything. If this is more about drug money... It is not. You need not concern yourself about that. What this is about is about something far more important than money. The glue I was referring to is food. I know. The more biofuel that we grow as an alternative to petrol, the more agricultural land will be dedicated to the production of energy for our cars, rather than the food to put inside our children's stomachs. Add that to overpriced houses and a property boom engineered by the banks, the spiralling costs of education and the rising utility bills, and the wealth of the people will slowly be taken away from them, while every day they are encouraged to take on more crippling debt. And the big secret? That's simple. This did not happen by accident. This was not because the bankers took their eyes off the ball. On the contrary, this has been the plan for decades. Someone has to tell the people, save your money for a rainy day. After the social gains of the 60s, we are now stepping backwards one bill at a time. We are producing a workforce that cannot afford to say no and a people falling behind the living standards of their parents. The affluence of the late 20th century is being eroded via the debt culture of the early 21st. We must warn the public, not of the threat they face from the overarching influence of big government, but from the bullying effect of big business. Bravo! Bravo! Very nicely put, Prime Minister. A very nice flourish at the end, I thought. It is no performance. It's what I intend to say at my speech tonight. I'm sure your colleagues in the city, or even the high street banks, would be thrilled to hear you. Proclaim your message from on high. Start living within our means. Get used to the idea of spending when you can afford it. And throw away that credit card. Only part with cash in our pockets so we don't have to borrow. That is your great idea, is it? And who exactly are you appealing to? Certainly not the financial institutions, those who rely on lending money. Not the city that reflects confidence in the economy, and definitely not the people whose homes are the only true reflection of their wealth. If your neighbour doesn't borrow any money to buy your home, then what is the value of the roof over your own head? You exist to secure the drug money that comes into this country. <sighs> Does illegal money pass through the city of London or Paris or Hong Kong or Moscow or New York? Of course it does. But on the back of such fund, billions are lent out that people have used to buy the bricks and mortar that protects their families. Do you really think that we are totally heartless? That we don't live in the same world as everyone else? We have families too, you know. We don't want to see the world change all around us. We are personally committed to this. If you persuade the people of this country to turn their backs on the concept of debt, nothing they have will be worth anything, because no one will be able to pay a farthing to buy it. Your desire to simply help the public by doing what is right may sound perfectly admirable in his speech, but it is not something that the nation can afford. It is not something we can tolerate. Not something you can tolerate? What precisely do you mean by that? We will not allow you to damage this country. Damage this country? There are patriots. I'm a patriot. That simply will not allow this, this, this speech of yours, to happen. You will not endanger the economic prosperity of a people. The people have been set up for one hell of a fall. That will be managed when the time comes. When the time comes? It's here now. The banks are failing. The cost of living is sky high. No one even lies about the recession anymore. And how did all this happen? Low interest rates, privatisations, human greed. Do you really believe that you can hang all of this at the door of one individual? 
One political party? One moment in history? Everyone has been a part of it. Everyone thought they were doing well out of it. The whole world saw the last decade as a bonus time. The public felt wealthy because they had money, on paper. The city believed it was on a high due to rising share prices and the government knew it was doing well as the tax from East London ran in hand over fist. No one wants to think that the show might one day come to an end. Do you think this has affected only the UK and the US? It's across the planet! The entire species has followed a policy of appearing to get rich quick. And you know what? You are right. It was all a set-up. A set-up that has taken 30 years to fulfil. You blame low interest rates and the selling off of the utilities. Well, who organised that? Did these ideas come from either side of the Vauxhall Bridge? No. They were from the likes of you. Those of your kind that want nothing more than to hold the perceived trappings of power within your grasp. It was your kind that sold out to the city. And the nation has paid the price ever since. And they will continue to pay again and again and again. Until some point in the future when you are finally forced, screaming and shouting, into taking the country back and running it properly like you were elected to do in the first place. We cannot have the commercial holdings of the people reduced to nothing. Because if the people's money and assets are worth nothing, then neither will those of the elite be worth anything. If you've no food in your stomach, what is the value of property? The illusion must continue. That is the real glue that holds and binds society together. People have always scratched in the dirt for gold. While they slowly starved. I'm just going to tell them how they were put into this position and why. What are you going to say? That the aim is not to crash and amalgamate individual banks, but whole economies. Crash the state, bankrupt entire nations, bring about the end of any value of national currencies and replace them with a global currency. Once you've achieved that, you really are only one step away from a global one-world government. Prime Minister, there are those who think you may have finally flipped. Oh, you think so? I am going to walk outside into Downing Street and address the nation. All debt will be frozen and cancelled. This country is going to prepare itself properly for the future, if you will excuse me. No one will stop you from speaking out, Prime Minister. In fact, I for one will watch with great interest for your performance. But know this. The tanks will be around Heathrow, Gatwick, Luton, Manchester, Birmingham, Glasgow, on the streets of Whitehall... Horse Guards Parade, Parliament Square, and on and on before you have even finished. The troops are ready. You only have to say the words. Are you threatening me with a coup d'etat? I'm telling you, Mr Linstead, that if you remain in office, armed soldiers will walk the streets of this city. There may even be blood on those very streets. If, on the other hand, you should choose to retire from public life... You will receive a hugely favourable endorsement from the media. In political death, you will find more life than you ever enjoyed while you held this office. The Queen would never accept it. Her Majesty is the world's greatest political survivor. I assure you, she would. And the people? They will move on very quickly. This will make it painless. What's that? I'm sure you can guess. Personal reasons. Ah, How very British. Ah, Odd that when the chips finally fall, it's all the people you don't see that watch you the closest. Put on a good show, Prime Minister. We will be watching. And that, as people say, was that. I walked out into the sunshine and announced my resignation. Yes, you were, sorry, are right. I intend to use my book as an explanation for my term in office and my departing from that office in every detail that I can recall. About the food? Yes. About debt? Oh, yes. I'm a free man now, no longer constrained by the pressure to keep up an image. I am now totally free to speak my mind, and I will. We can't have that. Really? We won't have that. 
Who the hell do you think you are to tell me what I can or can't say in my book? I'll write what I want to write, what you lot stopped me from saying, what I couldn't say to the people I've written down. Some will read it, some will talk about it, some will listen. A small percent might even prepare. My book will be published, and you can read all about it. But more importantly, there's nothing you can do to stop it. We'll see about that, Mr Linstead. We'll see about it all. We know you already have a publisher, but with a court order banning circulation, you might find it difficult to get anyone to even open the first page. So, you do your worst, Mr Linstead. Try and tell the world if you see so fit. But no one will see one page of your book. Drag it through the legal system if you want, but we'll fight you all the way. And the state always wins. Block the book if you think you can. Block all the websites that you think might carry it. Do whatever you believe you can do, but the message will get out. You see, Miss Wilson, the way you make millions of people feel poor is not by keeping them down. It's by lifting them up in the first place and then dropping them from a great height. We'll see. Good day to you, Miss Wilson. And to you, Mr Linstead. You'll forgive me if I don't shake your hand. Charles? Ah, sorry about that. What? Oh, can you hear something on the line? Ah, that's a little scrambling device I've just had fitted, just in case. In fact, I thought this very conversation might be the perfect time to try it out. Walls having ears and all that, as they say. Now, this final chapter, I was thinking about it on reflection. I think I've said all that needs to be said. It, it, it's pretty much all there, I think. After all, I did step down for reasons personal to myself. My wife's illness, as you know. And I don't wish to come across all sanctimonious. Let's just leave it as it is. Let's not change one word. Huh? Revelations and advertising. Oh. Charles, Charles. Sadly, there are no revelations at all. It's all already known and out in the public domain. Simply scan the internet if you don't believe me. Great thing, the internet. Managed to confuse everything the internet has. No one believes anything if it's from the internet, even when it is accurate. Anyway, uh, uh, where were we? Um, oh, advertising. Yes, advertising. I wouldn't worry about that, Charles. We're about to get advertising the likes of which you simply can't buy, and all at the cost of the taxpayer. Remember this, Charles. The mystery lies not in the opening of the secret door, but in people's belief in what might lie just behind it, even if there's nothing there at all. <laughs> ah, I think, Charles, I'll retire to the south of France. Adieu. In Interview with the Next Prime Minister, Duncan Smith was Joe Linstead, and Katie Williams was Mary Wilson. Artwork for the production was by Sheila Jackson, and the play was written and directed by John Fryer. Interview with the Next Prime Minister is an audio production for Political Art. <laughs>